Hello everyone, this is going to be a basic Cassandra breakdown video. This is not to be confused with a moveless breakdown. I'm basically just going to be talking about her playstyle as well as her unique mechanics in Soul Calibur 6. So what does Cassandra play like? Cassandra plays like a grappler because she has command throws on both throw breaks as well as crouch grabs as well as a tackle stance that will force you to break a grab either front or backwards. So she always has throw mix-ups basically. Now, what makes her different than, say, a character like Astaroth? Why would you want to play her over Astaroth? So, while Astaroth may have more range, Cassandra has the basic poking style that you would want from a character. Uh, like, she has a normal speed AA, BB, 2A, so you can control people a lot more efficiently, or maybe differently is a better way to say it. But essentially, you will have the benefits of a poking character as well as a grappling character once you get familiar with both. I would say you would want to learn the poking aspect and moving aspect of this character before you get into grabs because you need to learn how to corral them in order to start the throws, right? So learning the throws first is kind of the backwards way to do it, in my opinion, and learning how to control how they play it with your pokes is going to be much more beneficial in the long term of the learning process. Now let's go over her unique mechanics that are very important for her. So she has a guard gauge consumption mechanic, which we will talk about later, as well as a mechanic which is much more prevalent, Divine Force. Now Divine Force is when she powers up with lightning. Now why is this important? So this is important because you can restore your guard gauge by doing Divine Force moves, as well as unleashing in a powerful attack. So what can I do with Divine Force? Let's talk about that later, because <laughs> first we need to figure out how to get into Divine Force. Now how do we get into Divine Force? We can press A plus K in training mode only to practice things, or we can go do the following moves. So to start, we have her 6A plus B. This is a very good gap closer because it is plus two on block and it will stop them from sidestepping. So even if they sidestep and block it, you are still at advantage. They still have to defend or mash out of your pressure, which is very strong. So learning how to use this move in neutral at the beginning of a round will help you get your divine force faster. She also has her 6-6-A plus B, where if you press backwards as it hits, you will do a hit throw, and that will cause you to get a Divine Force. So this is not a safe move at all. This is mainly for punishing because of its bad block frames. But it has good range, so you can realistically whip punish a lot of moves with it. And as you can see, it has a just frame too. So it's a very good move. Now, she also has some Divine Force triggers on her grabs. And let's go over that right now. Her 6-4 command throw will give her a divine force, and that is a backwards break. And because it is a command throw, in Soul Calibur 6, if you break a command grab, they are generally plus 8 on throw break. So this is very, very good for her. Because if you're trying to divine force them, and let's say they know that and they break the grab, you still can dictate the pace by either moving around to back off and like reinitiate later. Or if you know that they are going to move a specific way, you can punish their movement with your plus 8. So that is very good. <laughs> Uh, she also can get Divine Force off of her backwards throw, or backward back throw, like that. Uh, and this can also be done with her crouch grabs. Uh, crouch grab can lead to a back throw if you grab them in the back. So that is another good way to do it. Also, her tackle stance, if you do the front break, that will also give you Divine Force. So she has a lot of grabs that can put her into that state, which is very good. Um, and she also has several parries that will allow it to happen as well. She has full crouch 3B. While this move is unsafe, it can parry vertical, mid, and low attacks. This does include kicks. So let's say if Cassandra did her 1K and I timed it with this move. Uh, basically what will happen is you'll parry, right? Here, let's, let's just show that uh, in a second. All right, so she does her 1K. You go into that uh, 6 6 plus B animation. But like 66A plus B, you need to press back. And you will get the lightning, just like before. Okay, so that's very good. She also has her uh, 4A, which is a parry. Uh, if you parry a horizontal mid or high, uh, that is like assigned to an A move, this does not include, does not include kicks. You will get a divine force, you will do a hit throw. Uh, and same with her 4B. But instead of horizontals, it's vertical moves that do not include kicks. So high mid verticals, high mid horizontals, and this will do mid low verticals. 
So it's a lot to take in, but at the end of the day, these are some of the less important ones. The more important one is you can have this gap closer and the swift punish that's very, very nice and the grabs are much easier to set up. So that's why I talked about them later than the other uh, options. <clears throat> now, she also has her 236 parry, which is used for a lethal hit. Um, basically, if you parry a high, Okay, we're gonna do it on her. Oh, maybe not on block. You can get the lightning from that. Uh, you don't need to do the lethal hit. The crouch dash itself, once it successfully parries, will give you the divine force. So, I think this isn't too important either, but it's, it is still an option um, that she has. Uh, here's a good move. Uh, some good moves that will trigger divine force on block. Uh, we have her back turn B plus K. This activates on block and on hit. So let's show an example of that. Uh, guard all. So your back turn. Uh, oh, R in Divine Force. Your back turn, you press B plus K. You can see it triggers no matter what. So this is very good. And how can you set this up, really? I'm not going to always be in back turn. So you can do her 6 6 K hold. And she always has her back exposed to you. And if you land it on hit, they have to block her back turn B plus K. Or they could do a guard impact or something like that. Because if it, basically, the reason why this is so good is because they can't do much about it in this hit situation. So it's a very easy way to get Divine Force. Because even if they block it, I mean, you're still good to go. Uh, and this is also able to be set up on her 22kk hold. 22kk hold will put her in back turn. However, this is only a counter hit combo, so more often than not, you will not have the frame advantage to force this back turn B plus K, because uh, usually people don't get counter hit by this at a higher level. It does happen, but it's not something that you can rely on. But if you were to whip punish with her 6-6K, that is much more reliable, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, 2 2 K is a very good uh, string just to control people's movements. Uh, because uh, it does start horizontal low. And there is like a mid variation. So that is a very good string too. Uh, and then we're going to go into the meter burn stuff. Uh, her critical edge, whether it gets blocked or it hits, you will get a divine force. Um, but ideally you do not want this blocked because that would be tragic since it is unsafe. And will most likely get you seed in return. I don't believe this happens on with. Let me check real quick. Ah, it happens on whiff too. So that's something interesting as well. Um, and then the easiest, easiest, easiest way to get a Divine Force is to Soul Charge. When you're in your Soul Charge state, you have permanent Divine Force moves. So if you spend your Divine Force, like I did right there on that Divine Force move, I still have it. So if you're Soul Charging properly, you can make really insane comebacks. Now that we talked about all the ways to get Divine Force, let's say... Uh, oh wait, actually I forgot one. Uh, if you do her 4B plus K or BBB, that will um, give you a Divine Force on block or hit. Uh, however, it is a high, but the thing that's really good about this is you can fake it into a mid launcher that is safe. And if they guard impact it, it's only a level 1 GI stun, which means that you are not really in an immediate danger situation. Uh, okay, and now we will talk about Divine Force moves. So what can you do with Divine Force? So I'm sure the one that everyone's seen is if you Divine Force and then do her Critical Edge, it is much, much stronger. You see a whole new animation, and it does 95 damage. And for reference, a super does 80 damage, typically, and they that in itself does uh, a third of their life because this game has 240 health. So having a 95 damage super that fast is quite the luxury. Uh, but you can see I lost my Divine Force when I did the Divine Force version, so it does cost it. Uh, every Divine Force move will cost uh, your Divine Force. Um, and like I said, these moves will regenerate 10%. So, <laughs> like, they're so good. Uh, let's talk about all the Divine Force moves. So, in the Tackle Stance, if you press A plus B, she has an unblockable punch, but you may have noticed that if you do the unblockable punch, she self damages herself. So you can end up killing yourself or getting a double KO instead of a clean kill. But 
the benefit of this is you're going to review restoring your guard gauge and they can't do anything about it because this is an untackable throne extension so if you're like counter fishing with her 6k or like whip punishing with 6k hold like this is so good it's not as good in combos because the scaling is really really bad uh once you end up landing a lot of hits so i would i would really save this exclusively for the tackle uh if you were to ask me another counter at fisher she has besides the tackle um is her 2b uh this one's very advanced because it takes a while to recognize the counter hit state of the opponent but after it hits you get a combo um and it does over third life so if you get a lucky counter hit with her 2b you can basically just delete them so that is a very good counter fisher as well. I, you may be noticing a trend that her Divine Forest moves are very, very good. Um, now this move is very strong too. <laughs> You're going to be hearing that a lot. Her 6B, A plus B. The reason why this is so good, it is unsafe. So you, throwing it out randomly, you should be aware that it's minus 12. Um, but if you are to whip punish or block punish with this move, it's 16 frames and you're getting 74 damage. So if they're like a little under yellow health, you can kill them like in just one sh one good punish. Um, so that's that's really strong. Um, this is on um, the weaker side of her divine force options, but she has her two three six a. If you press a plus b, you can get a combo off it. But it's not very high damage, and I don't think it's particularly useful in combos. But you can use it in combos. But more often than not, you'll want to use her other divine force move, and I will be talking about that right now. So, in Divine Force, she has three projectiles, um, and they're proximity-based, they're not, um, they're not something that travels over time. So, let's go over that. So, we have her 3A plus B, which is the far-range version. You will crumple them like that, and I believe you get a combo that's not too hard. Um, depending on the distance, it's gonna be easier. Like, if I'm right here, this should be easier, but this is a combo. Uh, not very great at it. Uh, since this character is still new. But yeah, as you can see, that's a combo. Uh, and she has her 2A plus B version, which is just a straight up launcher. And she has her 1A plus B. Uh, all these moves hit grounded. And the thing that's really nice about her 1A plus B in particular is not only is it plus 4 on block, um, it does good chip, and it's very useful in a lot of combo situations. They all do chip, actually. But the combo application of the other moves are not nearly as strong as 1A plus B. Like, for example, if you land her command front throw, and you do this, they are going to lose a lot of health just for guessing wrong on the throw break. Now, that's very, very good. <laughs> very, very good. Uh, and I was talking about earlier how you can use it after her 3B. Uh, like this. So, that's very good combo filler, more than anything. Um... Yeah, and you will be gaining 10% uh, guard gauge every time you use it. So not only will you be chipping them and having plus frames, you're just going to be <laughs> healing yourself too. So it's a very, very useful move, her 1A plus B in particular. Uh, and that is all the Divine Force moves. Uh, let's go to the guard gauge consumers. So this is the antithesis of doing Divine Force because you will be losing 10% instead of gaining 10%. So anytime you see her glow purple or purpley blue, whatever you want to call that, uh... You will be losing 10% guard gauge, and the moves that will do that is our 2 on 4k. Uh, this is very good combo filler. Also, her 6p plus ka is very good combo filler. Uh, that will cost guard gauge. She has our 2 on 4a, which is very good for controlling the opponent's movements. Uh, she has 2 on 4b, b, or just 2 on 4b by itself, um, which will decay your guard. And as you can see, the crouch grab, the frontwards crouch grab, if you press k, you can opt to spend more guard gauge because if you don't you just do that so that's another way to spend your guard gauge um and then she has her 4a plus b the frisbee the captain america this is very very good um because you don't extend your hurt box so you're less likely to run into moves but you can drag them into you like you're playing zoslo mill so her 4a plus b is very good for controlling movement as well as her 2 on 4a um and her BBB and 4B plus K uh, also will consume guard gauge and her critical edge without divine force will consume guard gauge. But you do get a divine force no matter what. So 
that is all the guard gauge consumption. Uh, I would say as far as like the most important things to remember about her guard gauge is you really just want to use the combo fillers when you think you'll kill them with it, in my opinion. Because um, if you save your guard gauge, you can make her soul charge really scary uh, because her 2 4 a gets enhanced because the last hits plus on block and will be reverse ledges. So I think, uh, I think that's how you should be playing her guard gauge game. Uh, just using it for the space control more so than the combos unless you know they're gonna kill. Uh, and then lastly, we will be going over her soul charge stuff. Uh, I was thinking about going over her lethalits, but in my opinion, her lethalits aren't too important. You can go ahead and learn them. They're in the command list, but I feel like divine force is basically her lethal condition. Uh, you do so much damage with it that I, I, I fail to see the importance of learning her lethalits, um, besides just knowing them in very niche situations. So let's go over her soul charge. Uh, so you can do all of her divine, divine force moves liberally. Uh, so you can, like, your way over here, you can just keep spamming this. And let's say they're not whip punishing you at all. Each time you, like, thunder strike them, you're gaining 10%. So I did, like, two of these, right? I, I regained 10, 20% of my guard gauge just for doing two of them. Just an example. So a divine force spam is probably the best thing about this soul charge. Um, the other good things about this soul charge is the gap closer, like I said earlier. Uh, she also has a different back uh, gap closer, but it's for back dashing. Uh, her 2 and 4 A plus B, and you can follow up on it. Um, she also gets a new punish and combo filler with 2, 3, 6, A plus B. And she gets um, her 1 A plus G, has a new animation that makes it do more damage. Time for a shock. Um, and then her, this is kind of ass, but she does have an extension to her 4 B plus K. I think it's very useless, so don't, don't worry about that one. Uh, and that's basically Cassandra. Uh, learn how to access Define Force, and also learn how to poke so that you can grab them religiously. And learning how to move will also help you grab them religiously. I hope this video helps. You kill all the people online with this amazing DLC character. Definitely my favorite DLC character thus far. Thanks for watching.